Good day, grade sevens. Welcome to lesson 28 on the 28th of May. Today I'll be discussing functions and relationships. Now we started with functions and relationships already, so I'll give an overview of the work you've done already, and then I'll speak about the next concepts that are to follow. So functions show the relationship between a set of input values or numbers and the corresponding output values or numbers. So this relationship can be illustrated by using number sentences, flow diagrams, and tables. You have already worked with number sentences. We are going to work with flow diagrams as well as tables. Now, number sentences, in order to complete a number sentence, you'll normally have a block which stands in place of a missing value. So that is the value that you need to calculate. When we solve a number sentence problem, you normally need to use the opposite operation, so the inverse. So you have 15 minus a certain number is equal to seven. What you can do is take the seven to the left hand side. So when you move a number from one side to the other, the operation or the sign of the number changes. So it'd be 15 minus seven. Then you'll know your missing number is eight. Now, some terms that you need to know that are related to functions and relationships, your constants, variables, and coefficients. Now, a constant is something that does not change similar to the English meaning of the word, it remains the same. So in mathematics, a constant would be a number that is fixed. A three is a three. A variable, on the other hand, is something that can change in value. So that comes from the English word vary. Now, variables are the letters that represent unknown numbers in a number sentence. So a variable can take on any kind of number. The number can change. A coefficient is a number that, is a that a variable has been multiplied by. So it is a number in front of a variable. So if we look at an example, given an expression 2y plus 6, if you are asked to identify the constant, the variable, and the coefficient, you need to be able to do that. Now remember, there isn't always a constant, a variable, and a coefficient. You need to know what each of them are. So. In that example, the two is the coefficient. Remember, it is the number that the variable is multiplied by. The y is the variable. It can change in value, so you can start substitute any number into y. And then the positive six is the constant. Six is six, it doesn't change. If we look at another example of an expression, three a minus three, uh, the first three is the, um, coefficient. It is the number that the variable is multiplied by. The a is the variable, so the letter that can take on any value. And then minus three is the constant, the number that stays fixed. Now, looking at algebraic expressions and equations, it is very important that you understand these two terms and how they differ. So an expression is a group of terms that are separated by a plus and or a minus sign. So if we look at an example, 2y plus 5 minus 6a is an expression. Now please note there is no equal sign here. It is an expression, a group of terms that are separated by plus or minus sign. So there are three terms in that expression. 2y is one term, 5 is another term, and 6a is another term. If we look at another example, 4b times a plus 7c, that is an expression with two terms. So 4b times a can also be referred to as 4ab. The a is being multiplied by 4b, so that's one term. Then 7c is another term. In total, we have two terms. Now, an equation is a mathematical statement that has an equal sign between the terms of an algebraic expression. An equation says that the expression on the left side of the equal sign has the same value as the expression on the right side of the equal sign. If we look at an example, 7 plus 3a, one expression, is equal to 2b plus 5. That is another expression. Now saying these two expressions are equal, they are equal if a 
is equal to the number 2. So wherever there's an A substituting the number 2, substituting means to replace. And wherever you see a B, substitute the number 4. When you substitute the numbers in and calculate, both sides will be equal to 13, making the equation true or correct. You needed to complete exercise 8.1. That's what you would have done yesterday, and you would have marked it. Uh, you would have marked it today. So number one, you needed to um, write down if the examples of those statements are variables or constants. Number two, what information do you need to answer those questions? And then number three, copying the table into your book and you filled in which is a variable, which is a constant, and which is a coefficient of each algebraic expression given. So I hope you did understand um, the answers that I gave you in the memo. If not, please do ask me. So let me go through one or two of them with you. In A, we have the expression 3, made up of one term. Now, 3 is a fixed number, so it, it is a constant. There is no variable there, so you wouldn't have written anything under that column. And there is no coefficient, so you wouldn't have written anything in that column either. If we look at 5x, also an expression made up of one term. You have got a variable, which is x. Your variables are your letters. You do not have a constant, or you can say it's zero. There is no number there that stands on its own. And then the coefficient, the number in front of the variable that the variable is being multiplied, for, multiplied by, that is a five. In exercise 8.2 that you also had to complete yesterday and that you would have marked today, you needed to find the correct value to replace the box in the number sentences. Now, I hope you also did understand how to do that. A lot of inverse operations. Okay. If a number is added on the one side, if you need to move it to the opposite side of the equal sign, you would subtract it and so on. Now, substitution of variables in equations. That's the work I gave you to complete today. In algebra, we use letters to represent unknown numbers to help us solve problems. The letters, as you now know, are called variables. They can change in value. So if we look at the example, determine the value of y in the following. 6 plus y is equal to 9. So finding out what y is, what the value of y is. How would you do that? Now, y is equal to 3. How do you figure that out? The two methods that I explained to you in the notes, what you can do is method 1, you can um, move the numbers to one side or the constants. So you have a 6 on the left together with y and you have 9 on the other side. So you want the 6 to be on the same side as the 9. So you would subtract the 6. You are moving it to the opposite side of the equal sign. Okay, so y would be equal to 9 minus 6, and 9 minus 6 is 3. Or the second method, if you want to do that one, you remove the 6 on the left-hand side. So how do you remove 6? You subtract 6. So you say minus 6. 6 minus 6 gives you 0. You no longer have a 6. Now, in maths, you need to balance things out. What you do to the left side, you must do to the right side. So if you minus 6 on the left, you also have to minus 6 on the right. Therefore, y is equal to 9 minus 6, which is equal to 3. So both methods give you the same answer. You decide which one is easier for you, and you use that one. Same thing with um, example two, z minus four is equal to eight. So if I want to move that four to be on the same side as the eight, so I want the constants on one side, the right-hand side. If it was minus four, I must change the sign. It must be eight plus four. Now z will be equal to eight plus four, and eight plus four is 12. So z is equal to 12. Now, Looking at flow diagrams, flow diagrams are a diagrammatic representation of a set of instructions which must be followed. So they are used to solve the unknown variable of an equation. They are made up of different boxes which each have a different function. Flow diagrams normally have an input value, a processing and operation box which 
there can be more than one of those boxes and an output value. The processing and operation box can be thought of as the rule that we apply to the input value in order to find the output value. So when we say flow diagrams are di a diagrammatic representation of a set of instructions, they are literally that, a diagram, a drawing. So looking at this example of a flow diagram, the inputs would be the numbers on the left hand side. So each number that is an input corresponds with an output. So the processing operation, that is what is done in the middle or the rule. Looking at the first one, we have seven, which is the input. Processing an operation, if we times seven by two, the output or final answer will be 14. If you take six, you multiply it by two, you get 12. If you take five, multiply it by two, you get 10. If you take four times two, you get eight. Three times two, you get six. Now, please note, you can be given input values or output values. You need to be able to work from either direction, given the output, working the other way, or given the input. So if you look at the output values, we are given four and two. So we need to know what the input values would have been. Okay, so you would work with the inverse operation or saying what number times two would give me four, that would be two. And then what number times by two would give me two, that would be one. Now, in your textbook, you have some notes uh, similar to the ones that I've put in the previous slide. You can read through those, just explaining what a flow diagram is and what it shows you. And then it has some examples there as well. So on the left-hand side, we have our input values, two, four, and six. In the middle, we have our processing and operation box, which says plus 12 to the input. And on the right-hand side, we have our output values. So two plus 12, you get 14. Four plus 12, you get 16. Six plus 12, you get 18. Then, the second example. Now, they have not put in the operation there. So you don't know exactly what you're doing with 3,5. So looking at the outputs, you'll be able to determine what operation you are actually doing with the processing and operation value of 3.5. So we look at one, then we have 3.5 in the middle, and then our output is 3.5. Then we have 10, 3,5 and 35, and then we have 100, 3,5 and 350. So how, do, how are we getting our output values? We are multiplying each of the input values by 3.5. Comma five. So sometimes you'll be given a flow diagram that does not have a specific sign in the operation box. You would need to fill that in. So you'll be given the input and the output and you need to show what the relationship is. The classwork that you need to do related to flow diagrams is exercise 8.5, page 106 to 107. So you fill in the missing output values in the flow diagrams. Now, it is fine if you just fill in the missing values because the exercise is from the textbook. I will also give you a revision activity where you would need to draw the flow diagram itself, put in the input values, as well as put in the output values for yourself. So you're going to complete question one, two, three, and four. And then you will look at tables. So Tables can be used to describe the relationship between numbers. Now, the rule shows the relationship between the input values and the output values, as do flow diagrams. The input values can also be called x values and the output values can be called y values. So in the table below, if we look at all the inputs, we have minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two, and our output values, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. What is the rule? What are we doing to the input in order to generate or come up with the output? We are adding plus 2. So the rule is the input plus 2 gives us the output. 
There are some notes there for you to read about tables in your textbook. So they've given you an example. Tables are used for people to sit at as in the following illustration. The seating arrangement at the table is represented in a table. Number of tables, one, two, three, eight, and 23. So they've skipped some of the numbers. You need to recognize the rule or the pattern. Then the number of people, if it's one table, um, four people, two tables, six people, three tables, eight people, and so on. So you need to recognize what the rule is. So if y is equal to x plus two, the table would represent it as follows. Then we use the rule y equals x plus two. We add a two to the top number to get the bottom number. So one plus two gives you three, two plus two, 2 gives you 4, 3 plus 2 gives you 5, and so on. So you can generate any value with that same rule. If y is equal to 3x, the table would represent it as follows. So the rules y equal to 3x, you multiply the top number by 3 to get the bottom number. 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, and so on, 10 times three is 30, 30 times three is 90. The classwork exercise I would like you to complete for the concept of tables is exercise 8.6. Please complete each table. Now, again, you can write just the answers, but if you want to, you can draw, redraw the table. Either of them is fine. Then for homework, I would like you to please complete exercise 8.7. Remember to write a heading for each of the exercises. So do distinguish between classwork and homework because you are completing everything in your maths workbook. Do not forget the date, maths date, remember the year first, then the month, and then the day. Now, I hope you've had a better understanding of functions and relationships. And we will be doing a revision exercise once we have done corrections for these activities, 8.5, 8.6, and 8.7. Now, I hope to see all of you very, very soon. And until then, stay home and stay safe. Goodbye.